Listen closely to that sound. That rhythmic metallic clatter isn't just a mechanical failure, it is the death rattle of a $5 billion gamble. That is the sound of a connecting rod bearing fusing to a crankshaft at 3,000 RPM, turning the pride of Japanese engineering into a 6,000-pound paperweight. This isn't just a recall, this is an industrial catastrophe that threatens to undo 50 years of reliability reputation in a single machining cycle. Before we reveal why this $5 billion gamble is failing and dissect the microscopic debris destroying these engines, hit subscribe to join the world's most technical car community. We don't just review cars, we perform forensic autopsies. To understand the gravity of the Toyota Tundra and Lexus LX engine failures, we have to go back to the boardroom decision that started it all. This is the story of the TNGAF platform and the death of the V8. For decades, the UR Series V8 was the iron lung of Toyota's truck dominance, inefficient, yes, but virtually indestructible. But under the pressure of global emissions mandates and the relentless march toward efficiency, CEO Akio Toyota sanctioned a radical pivot. The directive was clear, invest $5 billion into a modular body-on-frame architecture that could support hybridization and twin turbocharging. The result was the V35A FTS, a 3.4-liter twin-turbo V6 that was supposed to be the technological marvel of the modern era. On paper, it is a masterpiece of thermal efficiency. It utilizes a jagged-edge laser-clad valve seat process, which aids in intake airflow speed and cooling, theoretically increasing the heat transfer coefficient by nearly 40% compared to traditional Preston valve seats. The engine block is an aluminum die-cast open-deck design, utilizing cast-iron liners for durability. However, the complexity required to extract 389 horsepower and 479 pound-feet of torque from this displacement introduced tolerances so tight that they left zero margin for error, and that is where the gamble turned into a nightmare. Let's get forensic. The issue at the heart of Debrigate is not a design flaw in the combustion geometry, but a catastrophic lapse in the subtractive manufacturing process. During the machining of the engine block at the Alabama and Japan powertrain facilities, the raw aluminum casting undergoes a series of honing and boring operations to create the cylinder bores and oil galleys. In a standard production environment, high-pressure coolant jets flushing at over 1,000 psi are used to evacuate metal swarf, microscopic chips of aluminum and iron removed during cutting. However, our investigation reveals that in specific production batches, this flushing process failed to clear the deeper recesses of the oil passages, specifically the main oil galley feeding the crankshaft bearings. We are talking about particles sometimes smaller than 200 microns, roughly the thickness of a heavy coat of paint. But in the world of hydrodynamic lubrication, 200 microns is a boulder. When the V35A FTS engine is fired up, the oil pump, a variable displacement vane type designed to optimize pressure based on thermal load and RPM, begins to circulate 0W20 synthetic oil. This low-viscosity lubricant is essential for fuel economy and tight tolerances, relying on advanced additive packages containing zinc dialkyl dithiophosphates, ZDDP, and molybdenum dithiocarbamate to form a tribal film that prevents metal-to-metal -metal contact. Under normal operation, the crankshaft floats on a wedge of this oil, pressurized between the main journal and the bearing shell. This constitutes a hydrodynamic wedge governed by the Reynolds equation of lubrication where the load carrying capacity is proportional to the viscosity and speed and inversely proportional to the square of the film thickness. Enter the debris. As the engine cycles, those retained machining shavings are dislodged from the block walls by the heat and vibration. They travel downstream, bypassing the primary filtration systems in some cases during cold start bypass modes, or simply originating downstream of the filter. These aluminum shards enter the narrow clearance between the crankshaft journal and the main bearing. The clearance here is measured in ten thousandths of an inch. When a piece of aluminum debris enters this high-pressure zone, it disrupts the oil wedge. It scores the soft babbit material of the bearing shell. This scoring creates friction. Friction creates heat massive localized heat spikes exceeding 500 degrees Fahrenheit in milliseconds. The oil film shears and evaporates. The ZDDP additives deplete instantly. We now have boundary lubrication failure. The steel crankshaft journal makes physical contact with the bearing. The aluminum backing of the bearing melts and literally welds itself to the spinning crankshaft. 
the engine's ECU, detecting the immense resistance via the crank position sensor's deceleration variance, might try to compensate by adjusting timing or throttle, but physics has already taken over. The connecting rod, no longer rotating smoothly around the crank, is subjected to immense compressive and tensile loads it was not designed to handle in a seized state. It snaps or blasts through the side of the aluminum block. This is what we call a rapid, unscheduled disassembly. The forensic evidence is damning. Teardowns of affected units show distinct scoring on the main pairings consistent with particulate contamination, not oil starvation from pump failure. This proves the killer was inside the house the entire time. But let's look deeper at the software side. The modern ECU in the Tundra manages thousands of parameters, from wastegate duty cycle to direct injection pulse width. Critics argue that the limp mode protocols were insufficiently sensitive to early stage knock or vibration signatures that characterize the onset of bearing failure. By the time the driver hears the knock, the bearing service has already been compromised. A more aggressive knock sensor algorithm utilizing Fourier transform analysis on the vibration frequencies could theoretically have detected the specific harmonic resonance of a scoring bearing earlier, potentially shutting the engine down to save the block, but that code wasn't there. Now let's pivot to layer 3, the market verdict and the economic fallout. This is where the $5 billion figure becomes terrifyingly relevant. Toyota has issued a recall affecting over 100,000 Tundra and Lexus LX models. This is not a software update. This is not a sensor swap. The remedy for a compromised short block is a full engine replacement. Let's do the math. A fully dressed V35A FTS long block, coupled with the labor required to lift the cab off the chassis, a roughly 20 to 30 hour job depending on the technician's proficiency, puts the cost per claim conservatively at $20,000 to $30,000. Multiply that by 100,000 units. You are looking at a potential liability of $2 to $3 billion in direct repair costs alone. That wipes out the profit margin for the entire Tundra program for years but the financial cost pales in comparison to the reputational cost. Toyota built its empire on the premise of the Million Mile Tundra. The resale value of the brand is inextricably linked to the idea that you can buy a Toyota, drive it through a war zone, and it will still start. Debrigate shatters that illusion. It suggests that in the pursuit of complexity and efficiency, quality control, the very essence of the Toyota way or Kaizen, was compromised. We are seeing class action lawsuits forming, alleging that Toyota knew about the manufacturing defects and delayed the recall to mitigate stock price impacts. The dealership network is overwhelmed, service space are clogged with immobile trucks, waiting for back-ordered engines that take months to arrive. Supply chains for replacement parts are strained to the breaking point. The resale value of 2022-2023 Tundras has already begun to soften as the market reacts to the uncertainty. Buyers are asking, is my VIN on the list? Did the debris clear out? Or is it a ticking time bomb waiting for the warranty to expire? This uncertainty is the poison in the well. The tragedy is that the V35A is, by design, a brilliant engine. Its water-cooled intercoolers, its electronic wastegate control, its dual injection system combining port and direct injection to clean the valves while maximizing power, it is engineering genius. But an engine is only as good as its weakest manufacturing link, in this case, a microscopic piece of aluminotion to its knees. So what is the verdict? Is the Tundra dead? No. Toyota will fix this. They have the capital and the engineering prowess to purge the manufacturing lines and implement stricter quality controls but the scar tissue will remain. The era of the bulletproof, overbuilt, understressed V8 is gone, replaced by high-performance, high-stress, high-complexity systems, where a single micron of error results in total failure. This is the new reality of the automotive industry. As consumers, we are paying more for technology that is objectively more capable, but subjectively more fragile. If you own one of these trucks, do not ignore the recall. Do not assume your oil change cleared the debris. Demand the inspection. Demand the replacement if you qualify. Because in the battle between a 200 micron chip of aluminum and a $5 billion platform, the aluminum is winning. This has been a forensic autopsy of Toyota's debris crisis. If you want to understand the machines you drive at a molecular level, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button.